I'm Luca Giliberti, contributing writer at Gold Derby, joined today by Emmy nominee Max Minghella, who just received his very first Emmy nomination in the category of Best Drama Supporting Actor for playing Nick Blaine on the fourth season of Hulu's The Handmaid's Tale. First off, congratulations on your nomination, Max. I should say, uh, praise be. Um, how, does it receive, how does it feel to receive your first ever Emmy nomination? And that as one of 10 acting nominations for the show and one of 21 total nominations for the show. I think you just hit the nail on the head, I think, to see um, so much of the Hamage family recognized, but specifically the crew um, was really meaningful because this year was so arduous and difficult and challenging. <laughs> and they did such an extraordinary job. And, and to see that kind of um acknowledgement in the fourth season of a show is obviously very rare and um we're so grateful i mean you know awards only mean so much but it does mean something it's very nice absolutely and it was nice to see previously unrecognized people like you and like ot and like madeline uh, to finally get nominated but before we discuss your emmy episode submission i would like to start on a more general note um mm -hmm. while you did guest star on the mindy project before handmaids handmaids is ultimately your first regular series mm -hmm. so how has it been for you getting to return to a character year after year um, as opposed to like in film, doing that one and only deep dive into your character? It's been um, so fascinating and I actually like it. I think when I, when, I, when I started working on the show, I had this sort of fear that you don't have control over where it's going and you don't quite know what's gonna happen and how do you plan for that? How do you adjust accordingly? But I've realized it's much like life. In life, we have no idea what the next chapter is gonna be. We don't know what the next episode of um, our story is. So it, it, it's actually been quite a, a wonderful process of discovery. And um, that's probably down to the writing. You know, if the writing wasn't so brilliant and so consistently brilliant and thoughtful, then, you know, maybe we, we wouldn't all feel this way. But um, certainly four seasons in, I, I absolutely love doing the show and feel so much excitement about going to work every day. And um, I'm so excited to go back. And that's a real testament, no pun intended, I think, to the collaborators and, and just the quality of the work. Absolutely. And uh, Nick is, an inc is incredibly enigmatic. He's very stoic. Physically, he's quite militant. But I feel like as the show has progressed, we've gotten to see uh, many more of his layers and who he is behind that stoicism. Has that been a conscious choice of yours to slowly peel back these layers uh, or how much of that was or is already on the page? Um, yeah, it's also a, a product of the narrative. You know, in the first season of the show, he's within the Waterford house, but there's really no sort of breathing space. He can't sort of drop his guard at any point. And then as his role has expanded within Gilead, he, he also has more opportunity, I think, for moments of freedom. Um, and so we're getting to see stuff. I have to also credit Elizabeth Moss, who, you know, oh, yeah was extremely involved th this year um, behind the camera. And um, I think pushed all of us to do, you know, work that's sort of outside of our comfort zone. Um, and I'm very grateful to her, you know, she really sort of allow allowed me to sort of play and um, explore stuff that maybe we, we haven't been able to before. Um, so it was really a joy to work on these scenes and um, I'm very lucky because I don't, I tend to sort of come in and, and, and have these sort of one-on-one -on -one interactions. And, and this year that was almost exclusively with Bradley Whitford and yeah. Elizabeth Moss, who are, you know, two of, two of the greats. Um, so it's such an amazing kind of learning experience every time you go to work, I would say. Absolutely. And we'll get into your uh, scenes with uh, Bradley and Elizabeth in just a second. But what I think is often overlooked uh, about or, or with Nick is the fact that he was really rocked by tragedy uh, after witnessing the Waterford's first handmaid hang herself. Um, mm -hmm. How would you say this shaped or influenced um, him? And what else do you draw on when you're peeling back some of these layers and crafting this character in general? I mean, even beyond this tragic incident, he has such an extensive backstory. Yeah, no, I do. I think about how, how layered this person is. And um, 
there's so much there to mine all the time. I mean, there's an episode this year in season four, um, in episode nine, I think it is, and mm-hmm. we, June and Nick are reunited and, and, and Nick has a sort of moment with Nicole. And it was sort of one of the few times in the show where I kind of known ahead of time, there would be a little bit of a hiatus for the character. Um, I knew that he'd be coming back in that episode, but I also knew I, I would be gone for, I think it was like six, seven and eight. And so that gave me an opportunity to do a little bit of physical transformation, which normally I don't get to do on the show because of the nature of how we shoot. So, um, you know, if people notice that Nick is sort of about 20 pounds heavier and looks very, very tired in episode nine, um, that was sort of like the one time I've got to do something like that. And um, I, I certainly can see it. And it, to me, that was an interesting thing. It's not a loud thing in the scene, but I, I hope that the audience do notice that he looks maybe a little haggard or something. And it's just, it's only just a hint in a very hopefully not ostentatious way that this is not easy, you know, that Nick has his own um, his own demons he's wrestling with. This is probably very stressful on him, you know, in lots of ways, it takes a toll on him. And um, it was great to get the opportunity to sort of show that in a physical way. Oh yeah, it was absolutely not ostentatious because uh, I find that incredibly uh, fascinating. Yeah. Um, and you know what, jumping ahead uh, ahead to the fourth season, the last time we had seen Nick before the fourth season was, was in Household, which was the sixth episode of the third season. We last see him passing through the compartments uh, of a train uh, where he is saluted by Gilead soldiers. So where is Nick mentally at the beginning of the fourth season when he returns from the front lines uh, to the Eastern District after mm-hmm. June has helped these 86 children uh, escape to Canada? Well, I mean, you know, you've been talking about his past and I think that Nick is always trying to find some kind of way to repent for what he's done, I think. And June provides some slither of opportunity to do that. Some path to redemption. So that, I I sort of see it all quite in in quite a straightforward way. Maybe I overly simplify it, but to me, that's sort of always his journey is to find a way to um, regain some moral composure through this relationship and helping this woman. Very interesting. And that takes us right uh, to the third episode of the fourth season titled The Crossing, which centers on uh, June's recapturing and which has uh, been entered as your Emmy episode submission. Um, What went into the decision to submit this episode? Um, Oh God, I don't know. I don't don't really know what the the thinking was. Um, It's probably the one, I imagine they chose it because it's probably the one I'm in the most or something. I, I loved episode three, not because of, of my work in it, but because of how cinematic it was. It's my favorite episode we've done. I've not been quiet about that. Um, to me, it sort of nailed everything that I want out of the Handmaid's Tale experience. It has these incredibly powerful, intimate moments and, um, and sort of human, performance beats that are really sort of strong and memorable and then this kind of big spectacle and set piece it's like a it's like a it's a you know to me the Hammer's Tale is like at its best when it's great melodrama Mm -hmm. and to me episode three is like it's sort of most heightened melodrama absolutely and it's almost like a bottle episode I think it's uh, yeah 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 yeah, it's, it's very, it's, it's an incredible episode. And what you've also highlighted from this episode is the scene that you share with uh, Bradley Whitford in which uh, Commander Lawrence uh, tells Nick uh, to let June go, but Nick says that he really can't. So could you elaborate on what, or on why that scene was uh, so special to work, or why that scene was so special to work on? And just on this incredibly compelling dynamic between Nick and Commander Lawrence that is really spotlighted this season. Mm. Um... I think that probably stemmed a little bit from, from real life. Brad, Bradley and I have become very good friends out, outside of the show. Um, and because it's a show which is a big ensemble, you don't, we don't actually all know each other super well. Like we're, we all really love each other and really get along, but we also haven't had that much time together. 
which is interesting. But but, but Bradley Bradley and I have have spent an inordinate amount of time together, and so maybe it was Bruce sort of recognizing that and thinking there might be something kind of useful. Um, but you know, Whitford says something really smart about it, which is he said that you know, Waterford Waterford uh, not Waterford um, that Commander Lawrence and uh, Nick Blaine have this kind of similarly. It's sort of like a removed pragmatism, I think is how he phrased it. So they're very diff different characters, but I do think they kind of do share this similar energy and maybe kind of similar sense of humor. Um, so there's, a, I, I think they sort of make, they make a lot of sense as friends. Um, and maybe that again is a little bit of our relationship leading um, in, into the fiction of it. But uh, I, I love working with him so much. It's such a joy. And I hope we get to do more scenes together. I'm sort of vying for a spin-off. Oh, wow. A J. Law and uh, <laughs> spin-off where we you know, solve crimes. Hey, that would be interesting. Um, and, <laughs> and you've also mentioned, of course, Elizabeth Moss, who directed not only this episode, but two others, episodes eight and nine, the, on the latter of which we'll touch in just a second. But you also made your directorial debut uh, not too long ago with your feature, uh, Teen Spirit. So you've been in Elizabeth's shoes before. What was it like having an actor sit in the director's chair and having and that actor being someone who knows the show in and out? I knew she'd be very, very strong at the onset stuff. You know, I, I knew that she'd be brilliant at sort of managing everybody and, and running all the sort of practical elements of directing a, a show. Like I had no doubts about that. What I wasn't anticipating at all was her visual style and her ability to sort of deliver this spectacle. Not that I, not that I was underestimating, I just, it, the show has never looked like that before. It wasn't even yeah. about underestimating her or anything. It's just that the, the show hadn't sort of tried to do that ever. So it wasn't something that was on my mind. And I just was blown away when I saw episode three for the first time and called her immediately. And I think um, probably made her feel very uncomfortable with the bombardment of compliments. But um, I, I teased with her that she's sort of like a combination of Mike Lee and Zack Snyder. Like, exactly. you know, oh, the, yeah. the, 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 the intimate acting stuff is so truthful and real. And, you know, I think the best work any of us has ever done. And, and then at the same time is pushing the show uh, in terms of its sort of scale and um, action and um, all of the visceral kind of components of it to a new level. And I just wasn't expecting any of it. So I was really blown away by it. Yeah, it's yeah. As I mentioned, it's it's an incredible episode and really stands out uh, from not only not only in this season but in the series in general for the reasons that you mentioned. And in this episode, you share uh, two very intimate intimate scenes with uh, Elizabeth when June arrives at the detention facility at the beginning and when she and Nick uh, kiss at the end uh, uh, on the bridge. What is it like for Nick? Um, being still somewhat limited in what he can do to protect the person he loves so much. It's difficult and complicated and hopefully good, good drama. <laughs> um, you know, it's provided us with a lot of um, fuel for, for these scenes, you know, and we love working together. We really enjoy it. I mean, maybe she doesn't and she just sort of is very <laughs> good at acting and making feel like she does. But we really, I mean, I really look forward to, to working with her. And, um, you know, we didn't know each other at all before we started doing this show. And sometimes I think about how kind of brave that was to, um, to cast me without having done any sort of chemistry read or we'd never even spoke. Wow. So it's a miracle, I think, that we have this kind of natural chemistry that we do and this mutual kind of respect. We really get along and it's never been a complicated dynamic between us. Um, she's really a joy to work with and ultra, ultra professional. And I think everybody on the show would, would echo that. Yeah, and that, you know what, that dynamic takes us right uh, to the ninth episode, Progress, uh, in which June and Nick reunite once again, but this time in an undisclosed location and after June has escaped uh, to Canada. 
talk me through what it was like uh, shooting this very emotional, very important scene and what it means for both uh, Nick and June. Yeah, well, well, again, it was sort of great to have this opportunity to try and sort of have a little bit of a physical shift, which, um, you know, was was exciting and I think does lend something else to the scene. It was very, very cold. Oh, yeah. Very cold. And I'd be lying to say that that doesn't sort of affect performance. Um, I think you can sort of see them struggling for oxygen through most of those scenes. Um, but it was a really special, it's really special because I think it's the first time that you see Nick fully with his guard down ever from the Hammer's Tale thus far. Um, and a part of that was, was on the page and a part of that was Liz, Lizzie's direction and just sort of encouraging that in a way that was, um, was wonderful and I'm very grateful for. Um, it's very moving. I mean, I think that the thing that's moving is not me, it's her. That scene when she's driving away and there's the, you know, the gut yeah, cuts yeah. in the car. It's sort of such a testament, I think, to how much Lizzie is responsible for Nick. <laughs> you know, yeah. a lot of, uh, you know, if, if people ever respond to the character, I think what they're really responding to is Lizzie's reaction to the character more than anything that I'm doing. And I think that's a real lesson in acting. Um, so much of how we perceive somebody is to do with how other people in that fictional reality are reacting to that person. Um, so I have to credit, I think, um, Lizzie a huge amount with, you know, with, with making Nick sort of function at all as a, as a person. In the world. Wow, that's, that, that's fascinating. And, and after June leaves, uh, we see Nick uh, pull a wedding ring from his pocket and put it on. What do you think that means for their relationship, for Nick and June's relationship going forward? I've got no idea. I didn't yeah. like, I didn't know that was coming. Um, I was confounded by it and also don't know what's happening. Like no one's told me anything. <laughs> so I'm really curious. I mean, I'm just kind of going through my head going like, who could it be? Is it gonna be somebody who's already on the show? Are we gonna introduce somebody new? Um, he's already been through this. Nick's already had to have a marriage he didn't want yeah, to be in. Exactly. So I feel bad for this guy. He just keeps getting put in this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it'll, be, it'll make for good television. I'm very uh, curious. Absolutely. It'll be very interesting. And finally, we get to the finale in which Nick, among many others, uh, helps orchestrate Fred's unofficial return to Gilead so he can be handed over to June. Is Nick fully aware of what June is going to do with Fred after he leaves her in the woods? And if so, do you think he's really on board with that decision? And if not, how do you think he'll react to Fred's demise? I, do, I think he's completely conscious of where that's going. Um, there's a kind of like, there's a sort of uh, sniff of perversity, right? Mm -hmm. To that sequence. Um, that, you know, to me, he removes any kind of ambiguity about Nick's consciousness of what's going on. Like, yeah. I think it's very loud to me that he does know what's happening and this has all been orchestrated and Lawrence knows what's happening. Um, hopefully it was satisfying for the audience, you know, it hopefully was a catharsis for a long wait. Certainly, it was, it was both cathartic and I think also tragic to see, um, that someone like June can be driven to this place uh, where she, where rage turns into this, yeah, what we see in the finale. I think it's, I think it's both cathartic and uh, tragic and certainly, it, yeah, it's, it's yeah. an incredible um, episode and an incredible scene. Um, well, thank you so much, Max, uh, for, for joining us today and shedding light on your character and shedding light on your process. It was very interesting. To our viewers, make sure to check out the fourth season of The Handmaid's Tale if uh, you haven't already on Hulu and uh, subscribe before you leave here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Luca. Appreciate thank it. You.